Hey, this is Victoria with Bobble Bee Designs, and today we are going to be learning how to make this beautiful pot holder. It'll be a great first project for beginners, and we're going to be needing two colors. This first color I have is a beautiful rainbow color. I will have a link in the description box below for the specific brand, and it is in the color Psychedelic. I am going to be using a 5.5 millimeter hook, although it recommends a 5 millimeter hook. This is because it will create more spaces so that it will be easier to see um, while I'm stitching. I also wanted to add that you're going to need a 100% cotton yarn um, as opposed to traditional acrylic which is mm, the more popular type of yarn. Um, we're going to need cotton because it is heat resistant so it will not burn once your hot pot touches the um, pot holder. So grab your supplies and we will begin. To begin our project, we are going to make a slip knot by wrapping our yarn around our finger to create an X. We are going to take the other side of the yarn, wrap it around our finger again, and take the left side to cross over the right. If it's too tight, you're going to have a little bit of trouble as I did getting it over your finger. We are going to insert the hook into that loop and pull it tight. To hold the yarn in the hook, do it in whatever way is most comfortable and feels natural to you. We're going to start our foundation chain by placing our hook underneath the yarn and pulling through the loop. We're going to do this 25 times or until your chain is as long as you would like your pot holder to be. we have finished our foundation chain. This is going to be the length of our pot holder. If you would like it a little longer or shorter, you can add or take away stitches as you desire. It uh, will be a little bit longer because we will be adding a border at the end, so just keep that in mind. And I'm going to show you now how I count my stitches. And I just go down the chain and I put my finger down on the V and go all the way down. Whatever number you decided for the length of your foundation chain, this is going to be the number of single crochet stitches that we do for the entire pot holder. So at the end of every row, you should have the same amount of stitches as you begin with your foundation chain. Now we are going to begin row one by chaining one. This does not count towards our main row of stitches. This is just a turning chain. And we're going to insert into the middle of the second chain from the hook. And so that's going to be that 25th stitch that we made. Once we insert, we're going to pull up a loop. Okay, then we're going to have two loops on our hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through both of those. And I'm going to show you that again to you. We're going to insert through the center of the next chain over. If your stitches were a little tight, it may be a little hard to pull through. Okay, then we're going to pull through that. And we're going to yarn over and pull through two again. Okay, show you again. We're going to go through that next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. And you can see on the side we have three of our stitches. You can count by the V. It's easier for me to count on the side, or on the top rather than the side. And we're just going to continue the same process alongside the entire foundation chain, inserting into the center of every stitch, pulling up a loop, and yarning over, pulling through two loops. We're just going to continue this alongside the entire foundation chain. Now that we are reaching the end of our foundation chain, we're just going to continue to single crochet until we reach the end. The first 
um, our slip knot, so the knot that was created from our slip knot, does not count as a chain. So we're just going to chain into that very last one, or single crochet into that last one, and um, our first row is complete. This is how I count my chains. I just go on the top as I was saying previously, and I go all the way down, and if you count along with me, that is 25 rows on our foundation chain. are going to insert the hook back into the loop to begin row two. We're going to chain one for our turning chain and turn our work. We will be doing a single crochet all the way down this row just as the previous row and to begin we will insert our hook underneath that single crochet that we last did and you can see the two V's so we're going to insert it underneath that stitch right there. So we're going to insert our hook. You can see that we have both of those loops underneath the V, underneath the hook, or on top of the hook. And we're going to yarn over, pull through. We'll have two loops on our hook as before. Yarn over and pull through two. If you have too much tension on your yarn, you will struggle to pull it through the loop. And that is our first single crochet on row two. So see that again, we're just going to insert our hook through the space underneath the single crochet from the previous row, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. And we're going to continue to do this down the entire row until we have 25 single crochet again. Once we reach the end of our row, we're just going to chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to single crochet down the row the same as before. We're going to perform the same amount of rows as we did stitches. So I did 25 stitches alongside my foundation chain. So I'm going to perform 25 rows so it'll be an even square. If you'd like it to be a rectangle or not a perfect square, then you can just keep going until you are satisfied with the size of your dishcloth slash pot holder. Repeating this process for several times, your completed work should look something like this. And I've just got it stopped on two stitches before the end of my last row. We're going to single crochet into the second from last single crochet on the previous row. And the very last stitch we're going to um, slip stitch, which is done by inserting your hook in yarning over and pulling through and then we're pulling through that first loop directly instead of yarning over and pulling through two. So then we're just going to clip off to have a little bit of a tail but not too long or short and we're going to pull that through. Now if you like the way your pot holder looks now you are more than welcome to tie off and stop but I'm going to add a cute little border in white. To begin the border, we're going to find any empty space along the outside row. We're going to tie on the secondary color, like so. And it's just kind of like tying a knot on your shoe. To begin crocheting your border, we're going to insert the hook into the same chain space that we tied that secondary color onto and we're going to pull up a loop. Then we're going to begin single crocheting into the next chain space or empty chain space. This is the um, side of the pot holder and what it looks like. So this is where we turned our rows. It might be a little confusing to know where to do your single crochets. But if you just kind of pull your work, you can see the empty spaces. 
I would also like to add what I'm showing here and that is just the yarn end. I like to stitch or crochet over my yarn end so I don't have to tuck that in later. And um, it's kind of, you just put it over the top of the row so that you can't see it, um, but that it's completely tucked in. So we're just going to do one single crochet into every empty space until we reach the last stitch of the row, which is where we make our corner and turn to the other side of our pot holder. For the corner, we are going to crochet three single crochet stitches into the same stitch, which is the last, very last stitch on this row. Doing three single crochet stitches helps to create more of a defined corner. Then we are going to crochet one single crochet stitch into every stitch until the very end of the row where we will create our next corner. <music> corner will be done the same way as the last by crocheting three single crochet stitches into the very last stitch of the row and then turning your work. Continue doing a single crochet along the edge of the pot holder until we reach where we first began the secondary color. Just remember to do three single crochet in the very last stitch of every row. Now that we have reached the end of our row, we are going to do a single crochet into the very last, or the, actually the very first stitch of our first row. And then we're going to do a chain one and turn to begin the second row. For row two, we're going to be doing a single crochet stitch into every stitch along the border, and we're not going to be doing a any three single crochet stitches into the stitches, just one onto every stitch until we reach the end. Once you have reached the very end of row two, you're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch of the last row, and then we're going to um, cut and tie off. This last end will just need to be weaved in, but this is our finished work. This will look so cute in your home and you can do all kinds of different color combinations to match your kitchen. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow and I thank you for watching. Please let me know what you would like to see next and I'll see you next time.